Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile, and this is NBA Weekly. We're back, baby! First thing I want to talk about is just quick thought on an All-Star game. I think it's bullshit that a team's record should be an indicator of whether or not the player is good. Because, I mean, there are players like Devin Booker who is amazing. And I feel bad for him because he spent the majority of his career so far on a team that just sucks. And I don't think he deserves to be punished because the management can't do their job well. I mean, how much can you really expect from one individual? Because I know basketball, more than just about any other sport, is the one sport where a single player can make the most difference. However, at the end of the day, it's still a team game because especially nowadays, you have every single team scoring 120 points most nights. And how many players in the league have ever scored 100 points? One. And he only did it that one time. So, I'm just saying, you can only give so much credit to any single player for when the team is doing well. And there's only so much blame you can give to that player when the team is playing poorly. So I think, even though I, I think it's bullshit that you have really great players who are playing better than the people going to the All-Star game, but they don't get to go to the All-Star game because these other people have better players surrounding them who end up able to produce better results. At the same time, I understand the mentality behind it, even though I disagree with it, because the All-Star game is essentially a popularity contest, and while your skills should be the primary factor, a lot of it is just, you know, your renown. You know, because players who aren't winning, their teams usually aren't on TV as often. Their names aren't said quite as much. So I can understand from, fan perspe from a fan perspective exactly why a lot of the just normal everyday fans don't vote for a certain person. They don't hear his name as much. They don't think about him. That's why it took Kimber Walker to a lot of time before he started gaining popularity. Because no one paid any attention to Charlotte. But anyways, that's just that's my opinion. On well, now let's look at the playoff race. First of all, the trade deadline came and went in like a hurricane, and I feel like it's hard to pick any one winner or loser. The Heat definitely looked like they've improved the most. Clippers they added a good asset, and the the Cavs I don't even know what they're thinking. The Pistons, I feel like, yeah, they're definitely admitting, okay, this season's a wash. Let's just move on with our lives. And I feel like the Timberwolves are preparing more for the future. I don't think they have a legitimate shot this season. But, you know, there's, there's, just, there's so much to unpack, and I don't want to make this a half-hour video. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to go ahead and name the Heat the winners of the trade deadline. That being said, you know, you already have the Clippers, one of the best defensive teams in the league, adding another guy with length and athleticism who can shoot, making them slightly more dangerous offensively, even though they have some pretty good offensive players already. So, anyways, looking at the Eastern Conference, I'm really not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, mostly because it seems like it's fairly well set in stone. I don't think there's going to be too much shuffling on that end. You've got the Bucks. I, is there any doubt they're going to finish with the best record in the league that just for the entire season? They still, they're still in single-digit losses on the year. At this point in the season, that is incredibly impressive. And the Raptors somehow have gone on one of the quietest 14-game winning streaks ever. And right, and right behind them, you've got the Celtics on a 7-game winning streak. And though, and I feel like those are probably the teams that people were the most afraid of anyways. The Heat seem to have taken a few step back, but they're still right there in that fight. They still have a good shot of finishing top four seed. Sixers have been so up and down this season. I'm hearing a lot of stuff about, oh, tension in the locker rooms, which with that many personalities on that team, I felt like that's only a matter of time before the situation blows up. But that's not out here nor there. The point is, they're still they're a good team. They're a dangerous team, capable of being number one. They've just been so inconsistent. And just, you know, it's hard to have any faith in them. 
And outside of those one, those, I really just think whoever else even makes the playoffs, good chance those lower seeds are gonna get swept anyways. Pacers somehow taking a step back. No, they, but still, they've got thirty wins. They're, they're they're playing well enough that even in the Western Conference, they'd still be a playoff team right now, even though they've lost five in a row. But still, Pacers are a solid team. You know, so they're gonna be in the playoffs. They're gonna put up a half decent fight in the in the. They're gonna put up a half decent fight in the postseason, but. I, I don't expect too much out of them. Next year, however, who knows how good this team can really be. And then we go to the Western Conference, which I feel like, even though there will be maybe some minor shuffling, there won't be, I feel like there won't be too much change, as much as just reorganizing. Because right now, Lakers been, have been the top team all year, and I think we all expected them to finish near the top, I just don't think everyone expected them to necessarily come right out of the gate and just be doing the damn thing like they're doing. And then you've got the Clippers, who seem like they're still figuring it out. So imagine once they get up to 100%, just how amazing they'll be. And then, of course, right now, you've got the Nuggets in third place. And I think right now it is a three-team race between those guys to see who gets the top seed. And the Nuggets are a team that are hard to evaluate. They don't really, there's nothing about them that really leaps out to me necessarily. I mean, Jokic, he doesn't seem like that interesting a player to pay attention to. He's not a very athletic guy. You know, there's nothing, there's no one stat that really leaps off the page initially, but then you see the numbers he puts up. You know, he's, he's a very smart guy, and he's, he's playing very well. He's being effective as a scorer, a defender, a leader, even though he's got like a two-inch vertical. You know, it's not, he may not be what you would call a modern playmaker, but he's making plays. And they, they keep winning consistently. And then I think the the Jazz right now are in fourth place, and they're probably just going to stay, stay there. They're going to hold on to that spot. They're probably one of the more complete teams in the league. You know, solid on offense, solid on defense, decent depth. You know, I think, to me, they're not that scary, but they're good. They're a good team, and they're going to keep playing consistently well for the rest of the season and probably throughout the playoffs. I doubt, I would not be shocked if they ended up get, being the one team that gets upset in the first round, but I'm not expecting it at this point. And then looking at the rest of the teams, Houston Rockets going 100% in on small ball, which to me, I just don't think small ball is ever going to work in a league that is not inherently small ball. I think if the majority of teams are playing small ball, then Houston has a decent shot. But you know, Houston, I, I think they're probably in the same condition they were before. They're going to win games. They're going to lose games. They're going to get into the playoffs. They're probably going to lose. I just don't think... I mean, I'm, I'm an old codger. I miss the days when people when teams were going 70 to 80. You know, but... Just for me personally, I, just, I have trouble believing that small ball is capable of winning in the playoffs. Especially when you look at teams that are as big and physical as, like, the Lakers and the, and the Clippers... And if they ever have to end up, end up in the finals, they'd have to go up against teams like either Philadelphia or the Bucks. And I just feel like, you know, when the three-pointers are falling, then yes, they're a good asset. But have you been paying attention to the Rockets in the playoffs? For some reason, they get to the playoffs and those three-pointers stop falling. And so, it's hard for me to have any faith in them with this lineup to actually win a postseason matchup against any team in the league with a true center. <laughs> no, because like, you know, I, I think Shaq's the one who said it, man. If he had to play this team, he's getting 50 every night. He's getting 50, 30, 20 across the board. But, but whatever. I, I, I have trouble understanding how Dan Tony has managed to keep a job. 
He's a great coach at building the system that he wants to run, but I just don't think the system he wants to run is really capable of having long-term success in this league. And I just I have trouble believing that he that D'Antoni will ever win a finals. Okay, I have I do not believe that Mike D'Antoni with the system he likes to play will ever be able to win any championship. And then I mean looking at some of these other teams I still have trouble believing in the Grizzlies. I still have trouble believing in the Thunder. And, but that's more about just... Like, they shocked me. They, they are surpassing all expectations. But at the end of the day, they are playing consistently well. There's still potential for a drop-off down the road. But I'm not expecting it at this point. I feel like right now, unless one of those two teams shoots themselves in the foot or has a major injury, there's a good chance that, like I said, the playoffs are pretty much set because the teams behind them, you know, most of the teams, they're getting to 30 losses and stuff. I have trouble believing in any of them. The only two that stand any kind of chance would be the Blazers and the Spurs. And the Spurs, even though, like, I'm a Spurs fan, I want them to win. And paying attention to them all year, they look like they're finally starting to figure out who they are, who they need to be, their roles on the team. And this is some of the best basketball they've ever played. However, it might be just too little too late. It seems like every win streak is followed by an equally long losing streak. And they just, they've been bouncing around. They started off really bad. And now they've gotten to be a 500 team, which wouldn't be so horrible if they'd had a slightly better start. You know, you, and it's hard to expect them to go on a huge winning streak when you consider how many playoff teams are in front of them down the stretch. You know, looking at their record from here to the end of the season, the majority of teams have a better record than them, have a higher standing. And that might not necessarily be the worst thing, because for some reason we seem to play better against the playoff teams, because we can beat the Bucks and then lose to the Hawks, so I don't know what to think of them right now. All I know is that as things stand right now, it does look like the Spurs' historic you know, streak of playoff seasons is probably coming to an end this year. And then, the Blazers, I mean, it doesn't feel likely, but I can. it's easier to accept the possibility that they'll get into the playoffs. And if somehow the Blazers do end up fighting their way into the postseason... Guarantee Damian Lillard has to be the league MVP. He just has to be. Because is there any doubt that without him, they'd have 50 losses on the year right now? Is there any doubt about that? Anyways, that's... It's been a wild season. Not always fun, but very interesting. And, yeah, I can't guarantee how often I'll make these videos. It'll just be when I feel like I have something worth saying. So yeah, until the next time you see me in the video, this has been The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle. Don't forget, ooh, my autobiography, Everything is Impossible, still available, physical books and ebooks in multiple platforms. Links in the description down below. Not to mention, my debut comic book, Toxic, is finally coming out, digital only. It'll be on Comixology February 12th, that's Wednesday morning around 10 a.m., physical book might not be out till March unfortunately there's just it's, it's been a long hard road and the merchandise links in the description down below till the next time you see me my name has been Nathan Lyle hope you have a great week